To become meditative means to deny society. It's not enough to be in your own house denying society. That means just to speculate about society and then you go into society and you dress differently than society but you act with society. The enlightened means taking the chance to, for instance, walk sideways down the street or run backwards while you're jogging. It's to do things that you naturally can do, things that you naturally would enjoy, things that you naturally would benefit from, but that you're not going to do because of the way people see you. And you don't want to be judged in that way because you have a perception of yourself that you want to withhold because because your whole life you're trying to create and to hold firmly um, an image of yourself now even Bruce Lee says that the best form is no form he's talking about this too so that you when you become it in tune with your past lives you might find yourself walking like a certain animal or acting like an, a person that you could find from from the past or like a samurai, like a ninja, like a warrior, like a saint, like a monk, like a female if you're male, like a geisha, like a... Lion. Like a certain tree or like a philosopher. The list goes on. But to have the guts to actually express yourself as those things so you can know yourself in actuality as yourself through all your past life's expressions as the accumulation of yourself that you experience in your dreams. Then it's the difference between limiting yourself to society and expanding yourself as existence and throughout all time. Because out all time is going to outweigh just this period. Because this period and this century is only like a grain of rice compared to the entire sack that you have on your back. The invisible sack that you carry on your back. This century that we're that you're gonna live through is only like a minute to the earth. The earth does not care in that way. But when you become like the earth, when you become one with the earth, when you become as the earth then you're be getting close to the universe and then once you get close to the universe you're getting close closest to what's closest to you which is your iris which is your hair that is black and which is you Is it uh, like I was saying? It, it's the difference between somebody punching and then somebody punching with all of their chi. If you're just punching to knock somebody out, you you'll probably punch really hard. If your muscles are really strong, you train that way all the time, and you become meditative when you're actually training. But then, if you put all your energy consciously and mystically in that punch then it's gonna like send that guy flying across the ring and he's just gonna fly into the cage this is the type of thing that people of the past have experienced and have done but that we're trying to hide from from the limelight of society and you put that inside the movies so that happens inside the movies so they say that only happens in the movies but the thing is that as somebody who's in meditating and going into no mind for like an hour however or who has gone into nirvana is not going to really want to 
participate in a UFC type of setting because he sees that there's no use of the pride of it. A lot, it, a lot of fighters fight for the pride of it. The enlight in the person is not gonna really want that. There's, he has nothing to do with that. So then he has to question himself: Why does he want to fight here? Now, even though he knows this type of thing, he knows that he could still he could still lose. Because me, for instance, if I was an enlightened person, I would take the whole thing differently, almost more like wrestling. For instance, if I fought all my way to the UFC and it was my first fight, I might just stand there and let the guy knock me out just to show that, yo, you guys are stupid and martial arts are actually real. And, and, and that type of type of thing just to make a point and to get publicity and then once you get that pu pu publicity in that weird way then you take everything and, and you take everything uh, mystically then you're you're actually saying something in your art form rather than just beating that guy up because when you beat that guy up that's what you're saying you're saying that I beat this guy up everyone loves me but what I'm saying is this 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 because Someone who's enlightened and is going to be more with the actual martial arts form of it. When I'm, but when I say martial arts, I mean the spiritual aspect of it. The enlightened aspect of it. That's why you look through all these Asian movies and you see enlightenment as the form of it. But it, you only you see that in movies because you see that's just movies type of thing. But even still, the ground fighting is way stronger than that. So if someone takes you to the ground and you're all this martial arts stuff, you, you would say that beats all, 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 all your perceived martial arts generalization. For instance, there's so many rules that govern this fight that makes it not even a fight at all. Because there's no such thing as a fight. There's no such thing as this cage. There's no such thing as these people all around. There's no such thing as this actual fight. So when you approach it person to person and you're telling this person in front of you, don't fight me. Don't fight me. Let's do something magical. Let's do something legendary. The person is so trained and so egoistic that that person is going to immediately just pound you down and beat you. Now, when that person is going to pound you down and beat you, the actual love and of God of probably like the smaller person is what's gonna differentiate the expression of that for the enlightened person to say, okay, I won, thing. Because no matter what uh, you're doing, it's mostly in the actual training that you become humble. But in that off time, a lot of, uh, I see a lot of people are bound and forced into their ego because they are bound and forced into their ego. But as a UFC fighter yet, or a professional hockey player, you have to take the next step of your training and then to use your training as your actual meditation and to take it seriously as a meditation, not just to say this is like a meditation to me, but it's to say this is a meditation to me and not to look at the actual idea of somebody who's been meditating and is enlightened as just like a blank staring figure. Because when you look at it as a blank staring figure, then then the, you're going to experience and express yourself as a blank staring figure because you're not fully in the no mind state when you're trying to be the no mind state because that's your generalized perception of what a gen of no mind state is. Really, when you become enlightened and you get all the energy to your crown, that's when you start to experience your past lives. So all these people in the UFC were like some great warriors back in the days. So it's bringing a, a new aspect. It's almost like you're initially one fighter and then you bring another fighter into it. And then you bring another fighter into it. And then you bring a dinosaur and the lion and this into it. And then you even have that expression with you. And it, it can express as you in a certain, in a certain instinctual, instinctual moment. So it, all these fighters, the difference, and even still, all the NHL players, the difference is 
is is is calculated um, skill, calculated training, where you're formulated robotically to do this, and the, the, your your coach tells you to do this robotically. But it's always the instinct that scores the goal, and it's always the instinct that knocks the guy out, and it's always the instinct that wins. The, the team with the better instinct is the team that's going to win. Even if two two teams who have the same exact skill, same exact whatever, the team with the instinct and the chemistry is the one that's going to win. So no, 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 no. When you're taking all these hockey teams and stuff, you're already take, uh, splitting apart their instincts based on where that person's from, their last name, uh, their their ego uh, defined from their skill. It... it, it if, for instance, a coach doesn't support drinking and then he wants to get to know this player, but he doesn't get to know that player, he rather just signs that player, then of course he's taking a huge risk. And then you take like something from a movie and then you put that into the game and then whoever's the owner is going to take that and go more for a money generalized thing because this is... I don't want to waste my money on more of a chance. They want to just take the, the statistics and do the math and just do it like that. But what martial arts is saying is approach this thing differently. Do this a, a different type of way. So, it's always the...